So let's talk about why you can't do things. This is a really heartening opening talk. Why can't I? And if I could get away with because, when I was doing plugin reviews, my life would be so, so nice. My day-to-day -day job is working for DreamHost as a developer. I help write the software that we use to have our servers run WordPress as fast as possible, as secure as possible, as safe as possible. When I'm not doing that, though, I do reviews for WordPress.org on plugins. If you've submitted a plugin or used a plugin from WordPress.org, the odds are my eyes have been on the code. But because of that, I've learned all the things that you can and can't do and should and shouldn't do, and those are very different topics. So today, I'm going to talk about why you can't do certain things with your plugins. Have you ever wondered why you can't do things with your plugins? Why we don't let you use your own version of jQuery or call WP load or offload images? It's obvious to many people why we push back on nonces, on sanitization. That's security, right? But what about the rest of it? Why, for example, do we demand that you credit people on forks? Why do we ask that your demo content be as neutral as possible? Some of this is security, but much more is thinking about the global impact of WordPress. Safety third is a quote that some of my friends say when we go camping. They hand their child an ax and say, safety third, off goes the kid to chop wood. They know I used this, they think it's funny. But the meat and milk of any review is safety. We're looking for the egregious and the obvious security flaws in a plugin. And by obvious, what I mean is, once you've seen it and you're told what's wrong about it, you will know and understand it, but you can't magically know that. These things, like common sense, aren't obvious or common at all. You have to learn about security. Now, there's never a value judgment from us when we give someone a security review and say, this is not secure. There's no judgment at all. We don't look down on people for not magically knowing everything. But the biggest reason that you can't do things in your plugin is that it's not safe to do them. All right, what am I talking about when I mean that? I call this obvious security because it's really the basis of basics, excuse me, of what security is. You have to sanitize everything. You have to use nonces to ensure that only the people who should be doing a process actually do it. And if you prevent direct file access to stop people from seeing evil or being evil, well, that's pretty easy. Why can't you submit a plugin without those things? It's not safe. Although I will say if I had a nickel for every time somebody said, but only an admin will ever use this page, it's perfectly safe, they'd never do anything wrong. Admins are users too, and there is no one more capable of messing up your site than your admins. Watch them copy paste into the wrong field and wonder why they crashed a server. The less obvious, I say this because there are exceptions to security. In general, you don't call WP load, config, or blog header directly. But if you're making a backup plugin, then it makes perfect sense to call wp-config because you need to back it up. And since that file can be moved to different locations, of course you're going to search for it. Now, putting aside the fact that actually it's really hard to find out where wp-config is because people can move their content folder around, people use these usually to attempt to access WordPress core functions, and I say this with air quotes, without loading WordPress. Instead, you should be using functions like init or admin init. And you should always be using WordPress for your plugins because it can check for user permissions and it can check for security. But if you call those things directly, you lose out on everything that, well, makes WordPress, WordPress worth using. But you also can't include core libraries. Some of you may remember back in January, we had a problem with PHP Mailer. As it turned out, there was a big security flaw in it, and we had to upgrade the version that was in WordPress. Once we did that, as we did that actually, the WordPress core team turned to me and they said, hey, Mika, how many people 
are using PHP Nailer and plugins. Turned out there were about 90 plugins doing it. That's not that bad. But they were having the bad file in their files. So we had to tell them, hey, you don't actually need this file at all. You can just use WordPresses. The issue ended up causing us to close these plugins, all 90 of them, and of them, about 20 or 30 are still closed today because they just don't want to fix it. But we had to update our guidelines after this to say, this serious but kind of weird security issue, don't include files in your plugin if they're in core. And the reason is that if you use WordPress as copy, there's a much higher chance that people are going to actually update WordPress as opposed to updating the plugin. How many sites have you seen that don't have updated plugins, but they're on the latest and greatest version of WordPress? We've all seen that. Now there's obscure security. And I say this because the minute I say, okay, you can't include another plugin for security, people go, well, what does that have to do with security? This is related directly to the libraries we just talked about. See, if another plugin has a security issue, but you've wrapped that plugin up into yours, you're on the hook. You have to handle the update. You have to make sure everyone who uses your plugin knows what's going on and knows how to fix it quickly. That's a lot of responsibility. Most plugins are developed by one person. They do the code, they do the support, they do the everything. And to tell them, oh, and now you have to pay attention to every single other plugin you've included, it's a lot of work. And we're trying to protect the developers from doing more than they need to do. Does anyone remember RevSlider a couple of years ago had a great big security hole and a whole bunch of sites got hacked? The reason that that was bad was that RevSlider was included in, oh, about 100 or so themes. People didn't update the themes because, and this is probably my favorite part, the themes were purchased from places like Code Canyon. People had let their licenses expire. They didn't have access to the update. And it got even worse when you found out that sometimes those themes required you to update the theme and then pay another license to update the plugin inside the theme. It's kind of just this Russian nesting doll of craziness with licenses. And a lot of people got hacked because of it. But if they'd left it out and just said, optionally, you can buy this cool thing and add it on and the theme will magically work, they would have saved themselves a lot of headaches. Well, security also means you can't offload files and you can't use an iframe in your plugin. You can use it for a widget, don't get me wrong. There are lots of widget texts that are iframes. What I mean is you can't use an iframe on your admin page. Now, what does this have to do with security? Well, as soon as you're displaying, uh, displaying content from another website, you're trusting that domain not to serve up malware. And you're trusting it not to serve up malware on the admin side of somebody's WordPress site. Offloading files, especially files like JavaScript, can be dangerous if their server is hacked and a bad file is inserted. And yes, that's happened. Cross-domain uh, scripting shenanigans? Have you met iframes? The best way to handle contacting your server from your plugin is to use an API. It lets you put a key in that you can identify the exact user without actually tracking them in a weird way. You know their key, you know their domain. If these things magically don't match, you no longer have to serve your service to them. It's your protection as well as theirs. And now there's no messy GUI that you have to load. Speaking of this, you can't make sites slow intentionally or otherwise. Nobody wants to be the reason that someone's site is slow. If you make someone's site slow, you suck. Yeah, I said it. If you did it accidentally, that's okay. Just fix it. But if you're doing it on purpose, I really don't know what to say. And then yes, there are people that have said, well, I wanted to make it slower so that it didn't put too much load on my server so that I could track the users and figure out what they were doing. I'll get back to that in a second. The handful of people who have done this intentionally do bewilder me. But the way that they do it is by creating what we call an unnatural dependency. Who here likes to cook? or eat. <laughs> if you've ever cooked or baked, you might have run across some of those very weird, obscure recipes where they tell you to like get a bottle of beer 
And as you go through the recipe, you hit the end and you put your thing in the oven and you look at the beer bottle that was never once called for in the actual recipe. It's just listed on the ingredients for no reason whatsoever. I have a very old cookbook that actually does this regularly. So I've gotten in the habit of reading the ingredients and then the whole thing before I actually go shopping, which I used to never do. But that's an unnatural dependency. It's telling you that you need something that you really didn't need at all. When you're offloading files to your own server and your plugin, you're now a dependency for no reason whatsoever. Putting in a license check when you're not providing a service, it's the same thing. You've created a need that slows down people's sites that they didn't want at all. It makes things slower, it puts more strain on your server, and it doesn't help anyone. I said I'd come back to this. No collecting data or information from users unless they explicitly say yes and assume that they're going to say no. The whole reason we don't like unnatural dependencies is that it makes sites slower. But the other reason is that it tracks users without permission. If you load an image from the back end of your admin on your plugin, you can track users. And yes, someone did it, he got all the data, and then he turned around and tried to sell it. And he wanted to put more ads on his plugin with the data that he'd collected. He made the fatal mistake of actually emailing Otto. Uh, Otto is the other person who works on the plugin review teams, and he's sort of like a, a very grumpy lion. You don't want to make him mad. He can be very pugnacious, but once you've done something really bad, he's going to latch onto you and not let go until he's fixed the problem. And that usually means your code is no longer in the repository. <laughs> Selling ad space on the back end is a whole nother mess, and I will get to that too. But how would you feel if somebody took your data without asking you, turned around and sold it? Apple blacklists you forever when you do that, unless you're Uber. Still don't know how they got away with that. Always ask. You can't track unless you ask, and you can't track unless they say yes. This is all about privacy. So in the interest of privacy, we're back to images. Don't offload images, you can use them to track. Don't use a CDN that tracks usage. Have you seen Font Awesome's cool new CDN where you can put in and they'll tell you, um, we'll help you keep track of where you're using Font Awesome. And that sounded really cool for all of one second before my brain went, wait a second, if I can see where I'm using this code, then anybody using this code would be tracked by Font Awesome. And if I can see that, then I can get access to their information. We don't let you use Font Awesome's awesome CDN. And we've told Font Awesome why, and they understand. As for Google Analytics, this is a kind of a double problem. It's actually legally questionable as to whether or not you're allowed to use Google Analytics on the back end of WordPress. You can't use Google Ads on anything that isn't a forward-facing site. So that part's pretty clear. No Google Ads on your admins. It's legal. Google will be very angry, and yes, we'll report you. But analytics, it's this weird gray area. You can do it, but you have to sign all these weird papers. And the sites that you're on have to agree to be tracked, which they probably haven't. You also can't sign people up for emails. Who here likes getting spam emails? For people on the video, there's not a single hand being raised. No one likes spam emails. But signing people up for emails automatically when they install your plugin? That's just evil. Even with those tricky opt-outs where you make it seem like, oh, you know, if you click here to sign up for my email, I'll make sure you get updates. If you downloaded a plugin from WordPress.org, you're getting updates anyway. And yes, we do tell developers who do that, come on, knock it off. Don't be mean, don't be evil, don't do bad things. Opting people into service agreements is also illegal in some countries. We're trying to protect the developer here. In Germany, for example, you can't opt someone into a service. So you can't install the plugin and say, by installing this plugin, you automatically agree to my terms of use. That's going to get you sued. And you don't want that. And speaking of those things, you can't break the law. I can't believe I have to explain this regularly to some people. No, you don't get to break the law in your WordPress plugins. The law is different in every state, every county, every province, every territory, every city. I can go on. It's impossible to know 
all of that. I recently binge watched the entirety of The Good Wife because Tracy made me, my friend Tracy in, in Philly, and uh, they had a great episode where the American lawyers were talking to the International Sports Association for the Olympics, and they do everything in three languages, none of which are English. So it was really great to watch these Americans who had no idea what the world was like outside of America deal with international law. They had no idea what they were getting into, and that's because there are so many different laws that you have to watch out for. No one in this room can know all of them. Well, I'm going to take that back. I'm sure there, I'm going to find one person who could, and they're going to be sitting in there one day, and they're going to raise their hand and go, I know it. And I believe them, because there are some geniuses out there. But it's pretty unlikely that it's going to be someone who's coming to a word camp. They're probably very busy changing the world, I hope. But I don't have to be that kind of genius to know that violating terms of use and violating license agreements is breaking a law. See, the laws are why you can't use Yahoo or Google's finance API. They've both contacted the plugin team directly, explained to us why this is illegal, and asked us to close any plugins that do that. Occasionally we miss one and they slip through, and Google's pretty chill now. They didn't used to be. You also can't violate trademarks. There's a difference between copyright and trademark. There's a difference between the GPL and trademarks. Just because the GPL lets you fork code doesn't mean it's okay for you to take someone's trademark and make money off of it, or even just propagate it without their permission. That's why when you submit a plugin and you put in the name of, say, uh, WooCommerce-FooBar-Images, there is a Foo Images, I love that plugin. Um, you can't name it WooCommerce to start with. You can name it Woo, you could name it WC, but you can't use the phrase or the term WooCommerce because that belongs to WooCommerce. It's actually trademark now. It's copy protected. But what you can do is you can say Foo Images for WooCommerce, provided your Foo Images, of course. It does make it difficult when you're trying to come up with names for your plugins, and I do feel bad about this, but it protects you because if you, if you want to know what fun is, fun is 3M sending you cease and desist orders to tell you that these plugins have to be removed because they mention Post-it. One of it was Post-it now, and we had to explain to them, no, that's not how you use the word. They just misunderstood. They did a blanket dump on us, though, and we had a lot of plugins we had to close, and others we had to explain to them, look, we don't have a way to transfer these. Can we have an exception for these existing plugins? The goal here is to protect the developer, though. We're trying to stop you from having to close your plugin, get a lawsuit, or have a lot of really angry people who leave you one-star reviews because you're infringing on your trademarks. I mean, really, the crux of a lot of this is don't be evil. Don't do evil. And I hate that I have to say it in those ways, but don't intentionally lie, cheat, steal, be super sneaky, get people to click on those links that they really weren't interested in. All that stuff that you find annoying. Earlier I was mentioning Lord Buckley. Lord Buckley said, if you know what to do and you don't do it, there you bloody well are. The converse of that is also true. If you know what not to do and you do it anyway, there you are too. Let's look at this in a slightly brighter light. Being good, being a good person is why you can't do some kind of horrible words here. And yes, these are ugly words. Theft, blackmail, bribes. No one wants to be told, hi, we noticed you were blackmailing your users. Don't do that. But we have had to say that to people. Plug-in theft is taking somebody else's work and presenting it as your own. It's also taking someone's code when they've asked you explicitly not to. These things aren't necessarily against the law. They're not necessarily a violation of the GPL, but they're just not nice. If you didn't write the code and you take somebody else's code and make four or five changes, that's called a fork, but you should keep their credit in there and say, I forked this from this other person. It's just a nice thing to do. It's a good thing to do. Sometimes I'll tell people, look, you're a terrible person if you take other people's stuff and pretend it's yours. You wouldn't like it if they did it to you. And that often gets the idea through. 
But then we start talking about blackmailing and bribes, and people will argue that, no, it's not a bribe to pay someone for a review. Now, I can see some people possibly thinking, well, wait a second, paying someone for a review isn't technically a bribe. I was just in DC, pretty sure it is. The point is, though, is that if you're telling someone, hey, if you leave me a review, I don't care what the star is, I will give you a free add-on to my plugin, you're no longer getting an honest review from this person because they're reviewing you with the idea that I'm going to get a free thing if I say I like this plugin. They'll be inclined to give you a better review. They'll be inspired to like you a little bit more because you give them things. Giving people things is a great way to make them like you. It's not a great way to get honest feedback. Blackmail, on the other hand, is when you say something like, I won't fix the plugin, but if you give me $5 in PayPal, I will. And that happens a lot. Mostly because developers are small groups of people, one person, maybe two people, working on a plugin together. They need the money. They want to be able to do this full time. So they say, I don't have the time to do it, but if you give me some money, I'll be able to make the time. Sometimes that's very innocent. Other times, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's someone asking for blackmail. There's another one. There's a great story, actually. Uh, there was a plugin, had a problem. User had paid for an upgrade to this plugin. Now, usually, we don't let you leave reviews on the pro versions of plugins, but if your plugin says, you can pay me to upgrade, and it's in the admin screen of the free plugin, you've opened the door, and we allow the review in. Well, he paid for the upgrade, had a terrible time with it. Nothing that he was promised would be fixed was fixed. And within the 90-day window of when he said he could get his money back, he said, look, I give up. I'm not going to use this plugin. It just doesn't work for my scenario. You've tried to make it work, and it doesn't. Can I have my money back? I will promise you I won't use the plugin. Here's the license key back. Cancel it, whatever. And they said no. Now, they're within their legal rights to do that based on the terms of use. However, they then went on to say, no, we don't have to, and the guy left a one-star review. So the plugin developer put all the emails with a whole discussion of everything that had happened, including the guy's credit card information, because he was mad. And he said, I'll remove it when you change your review. Because you can't edit your reviews on WordPress.org, by the way. If you didn't know that, you can ask someone to edit their review. Usually, like if they leave you a review that's three stars and they say, but this didn't work and you fix it, you go back and you say, well, I fixed it. Could you possibly change your review to four stars? Thank you. Most people will do that. This guy said, I'll remove this stuff and I'll give you your money back if you leave me a five-star review. So the guy left a five-star review, got the money back, and then immediately turned around and told on him. <laughs> I had to applaud his cleverness of getting his money back, by the way, but it turned out this developer had done this to a lot of users. We went back. Not everything was posted in the WordPress forums. Some things were posted on their personal forums. And we found log after log of this situation, and we very gently showed the door to this developer, and we said, it's cool. Your code is great. Your behavior is not stuff we want to encourage in the WordPress.org directory. Have a nice day. We're serious about this stuff. Mistreating users is the fastest way to get people to stop using WordPress. The other fastest way, of course, is having a really terrible new user experience. We're working on that. The other things that you can't do is you can't lie about who you are, especially to try to get around the rules. See, once you've violated the guidelines severely enough, we do show you the door, and we tell you I'm sorry, we can't host your code. If it turns out that you've stolen all of your plugins, we show you the door. If you devolve into foul language that I wouldn't say in front of my foul-mouthed grandmother, she's a Cleveland baseball fan, believe me, she knows some pretty amazing words. If you use words that I wouldn't say around her, I'm going to show you the door. Because we don't want to be the nice police but we certainly don't want to be the place that lets everybody say whatever they want without understanding there are consequences to actions. We've asked people to leave. We've forced people to leave. One person we forced to leave, he made five different aliases and came back and resubmitted the code. 
The first one made it through the review process. The second one I noticed and thought, I've seen this code before. By the way, if that scares you that I can look at code and, and I review maybe 30 to 40 a day, different plugins, I can look at code and go, I've seen this code before. It is scary. Uh, I don't memorize it line for line, but I can tell you generally if I've seen chunks of code before. And that's because just like with writing and with speaking, everybody has a style. They have a cadence. They have a pattern that they like to use. You have it in your code too, and it's noticeable. And if I've had to look at someone's code because they've done terrible things, I'm more likely to remember it. Although if I've had to look at code because it's Jetpack, I'm more likely to remember it because Automatic has these styles that they have to use. Automatic and 10 up, I can almost always pick their plugins out of the lot because they're very consistent. I love them for it. But if you try to hide who you are and you think, well, I'm going to take this code and she's never going to know that Submarine is actually Jetpack because I'm going to change all the function names. Oh, we'll know. And if you try to lie about who you are just to hide that we may have kicked you out before and you really want to come back, First off, you're not winning any friends here. That's not how you get back in a club after you've been asked to leave, by doing the same thing that you did before, only worse. There are words for what that person is doing. They're generally four letters. I won't repeat them here because I'd like this to be up on WordPress TV. The short answer to all of this is that a sticky wicket isn't cricket. We have a specific prohibition against cheating. And there's a word that kind of sounds like cricket, and it applies here. Don't be that person. It's a we the Will Wheaton rule, if you're familiar with it. Don't be the person that does bad things just because. Don't spam. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. I sound like a parent, don't I? I don't have any children. I've got cats. Telling them not to steal is just sort of useless. I One day I'll get my fidget spinner back, I swear. They love it. I don't know. But basically, the ultimate rule that we have for the, for the plugin directory is don't be a gosh darn dirty spammer. Almost every rule spins off of that. Don't be a spammer. Don't do things you know aren't safe to do. And we will very rarely have any reason to close or reject any of your plugins. My name's Mika Epstein. I work for DreamHost as the uh, WordPress and DreamPress guru. I review plugins for WordPress.org. I blog about three times a week about WordPress and technology and weird things at halfelf.org. These slides are up online, and they've got speaker notes too, so accessibility friendly, yay. And now if you guys have any questions about anything in the directory, there's a microphone there. And if you talk on the microphone, you get picked up by WordCamp TV, and everybody's happy. Sorry. <laughs> of course, there's always somebody like the furthest away from the microphone. So I'm a mid-level, you know, non-plugin programmer, kind of intermediate on the front end side, and use Font Awesome a lot. And are you telling me that the base use of Font Awesome in any front end CSS is not going to violate something because it's it did something with cache, doing something with tracking as a default usage now? This is now a violation. So the question is, is using Font Awesome by default a violation of the plugin guidelines? No, it's using the Font Awesome CDN. So they have this weird CDN where you can type in like use.fontawesome.com slash and it's a number letter string. And that number letter string is attached to a specific email address. And that email address has access to see every single place that that was used. That's not okay. However, Font Awesome also has a Mac CDN uh, URL that's like maxcdn slash font awesome and then the version. That you can totally use and in fact we encourage it because font awesome is huge and if you can keep your plugin smaller by calling font awesome you're doing a good job. It also lets more people download the same file and it'll make everybody faster. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? You can ask anything about the plugin director by the way. It's, uh, I take open season when I do these talks. Someone's coming. Oh, no. When it's someone you know, you always worry. Softball. OK. So um, body notices. Uh, what's happening? Is there anything to be happening with body notices where you, know, you use blogging to a website or where 
you see like 20 notices and then the content of the dashboard is below the fold. Ah, yes, plugin notices. Uh, so we all know the problem of when you log into your WordPress dashboard and you have a notice that says, this plugin you need to do this, this plugin you need to do Y. Did you know that I'm selling this cool thing? And it's like you just walk down the I-90 or something and boom, there are things everywhere. By the way, I've lived in California long enough that I call it the, no matter what freeway or highway I'm talking about, sorry. So using the admin dashboard as a billboard is frowned upon. If you have a plugin notice, it should be, well, it has to be dismissible. But what constitutes dismissible is a little bit tetchy. If you're using Yoast SEO right now and you're on WordPress, or excuse me, PHP 5.2 or 5.3, you get a big old alert box on every single admin page that says, hey, you are running some really old software, friends. You need to upgrade. It's not dismissible in the traditional sense. You can't click an X and it goes away. But if you upgrade PHP, it does. It hits the spirit of the rule. And since Yoast agreed that he was willing to be a guinea pig and take all the hate that came with it and not ask us to remove any reviews that were one star because of it, we let him do it. If you were anyone but Yoast, I probably wouldn't have let you do that because most people aren't actually equipped for that level of vitriol. Uh, it was really bad. There was, it got all the way down to somebody making, um, somebody started a race war, and I wish I was kidding where he made a comment about how it was like putting Rosa Parks on the back of the bus. And at that point, I looked at it and I said, I think we need to block him because he's kind of, the cheese has slid off his cracker, as my southern in-laws would say. <sighs> Notices have to be dismissible, though. They have to be dismissible by the action of I click a button, they go away, or by solving whatever problem they're alerting you to. So for example, if your plugin won't work without pretty permalinks on, you can have an alert that says, hey, pretty permalinks aren't on. Click here to turn them on and leave it up until they turn it on because your code literally will not work unless that's done and it's all right to alert them of those things. But if you're using the notices to pop up every, say, six weeks and say, hey, you should buy this pro version, as long as it's dismissible, we'll let you do it. But if somebody gives you a one-star review because you're annoying the heck out of them, we ain't deleting it. We're letting it sit there, and we're letting people know, this is a great plugin. It's got great code. It's really annoying. We do our best to make the, uh, we want the populace to have the final say on if something is worth using or not. And if you're OK with getting one-star reviews and dropping your rating into the threes or twos because of it, even though you've got the best plugin out there, we're going to let you shoot yourself in the foot. But it does have to be dismissible. <laughs> is there anybody else? Let's see, is there a fun, I have like eight minutes. Oh gosh. Is there a fun anecdote I can tell anybody that they'd find interesting? Um, oh, the weirdest plugin we ever had to close. Uh, oh, the weirdest plugin we ever had to reject. So we let almost any plugin in, as long as it's legal we're going to let it in. And that meant that for a long time we actually had a make Donald Trump again plugin. I've been informed I'm in a blue state, in a blue city. I'm allowed to make this joke. Uh, after Trump won the election, the guy emails us and he says, I need to close this plugin. I'm afraid of retaliation. And I told him, you don't have to. We'll certainly protect you from people who attack the plugin just because they don't like its subject matter. But he still requested it closed. And it reminded me then, and I told him, of the plugin that we did reject, that was an anti-abortion plugin. Now, I don't have a horse in the race. I'm, I'm gay. My wife and I have no children. We're perfectly happy. But I looked at the plugin, and I looked at the code, and I looked at the images the guy was using in the plugin, and I thought, this is going to get him a lot of hate mail. There's really no way around making this a safe thing that everybody can use and that isn't going to attract negative attention. So I reached out to the developer and I said, look, I don't know how you're going to do this without getting people really, really mad at you. How much hate mail do you get on your website a day right now? He said, oh, about 100 to 200 a day. I said, this is going to double or triple it. Are you sure we really want to do this? I'm kind of leaning towards saying, no, we shouldn't host it. And I discussed it with him, and he agreed with me that perhaps this was not a good thing. Six months later, someone submits an anti-smoking plugin. Sure, smoking, bad smoking kills. Every single option for the plugin included 
very vivid pictures of what your lungs would look like when you died after smoking. And I sat there and I looked at it and I said, okay, we can't do this. Uh, and I explained to him, look, this again, it's a little bit strong, it's a little bit horrifying, and while I understand the point and I agree with it, maybe a simple counter that says so many people have died of lung cancer today would be a better idea. And he didn't like that, so we didn't approve the plugin. Part of the plugin review process isn't just, is it secure, is it safe, is it sane, is it good? It's also, is this going to hurt you, the developer? And those are pretty extreme examples, and you can think of all the extreme situations that people want to use the web for. Uh, you can think of folks that are anti-anything or pro-anything, and uh, each side will have their very interesting extremists. And because of that, they want to make plugins too, and they want to host them on WordPress.org. I'm not opposed to anyone speaking their mind. I'm opposed to how much effort am I going to have to put in to stop them from being attacked every single day. We've let in one or two. It's never ended well. And for the most part, when we tell these people, look, we can't afford to do this because you're going to get attacked, and then we're going to get attacked, and the drama that happens because of this doesn't help anybody. Let's help you host it by yourself off of GitHub. Let me show you how. And that usually works out all right. Nobody really gets too mad about that. It's, it's a difficult balance, though, when I say, you know, we're trying to protect the users, obviously. Users first, because they don't know how to code. But then we're also trying to protect the developers, because we've seen how bad things get. And nobody should have to live through that kind of hate. I don't care who you are. Nobody deserves hate. So on a cheerful note, <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming. And thank you, Boston, for letting me come back after a few years. Uh, maybe I can come back in another few years. I had a great time.